Hi everyone, this is the part 3 of this video, this series Nest.js with Auth0 and in this video we are going to talk about role based authorization in Auth0, I mean using uh, Nest.js APIs. So you might be wondering what I'm doing on uh, client side like the Next.js or React.js. We are just using this client ID and a client secret and this is being used with the next auth. So in the next JS, we can use a next auth to provide external authentication. And here I'm configuring the auth ID and secret ID and auth issuer. So it will enable, it will give me just one button. Using that, I can just do login with auth0 and my next JS API routes will manage the session, whatever is returned from the auth0. So next JS here is, here is an example. There can be React, Angular, any CSR or any SSR application. If you are doing it in the CSR, you got the access token. Now all the APIs will carry that. Here we are using SSR, Next.js. So the session will be managed on the, at the server side. And if you have any external microservices, then to talk to those microservices, you need to forward this same session, same access token to them so that they can uh, return you the data. Because maybe not every, each and every application manages whole data or whole APIs in the Next.js itself. You may be talking to external microservices to fetch the rest of the other information. For that, to validate, you need to pass that in the authorization header. So this is how it simply looks like. I have auth client ID on auth secret, next auth secret and next auth URL. And this is my auth0 issuer, tksharma.auth0.com. This is my route and this is my auth0 options. Right? Here, where I, this is the place where I'm configure, configuring auth0 settings. That's it. So this is how my Auth0 client look like, okay? This client can be CSR and SSR, anything. Now that's not the point. Here we are going to talk about how we can do role-based authorization uh, using Nest.js. When user has already been logged in using this Nest.js application and some role has already been assigned to him. So coming back to this same diagram, we already authenticated, you have access token, you are just using that same token to access the APIs. So we already got the, the user session information in the request object, request.user contains that. So to reach to the controller method, now what we need to do, we also have the user role. So this is how it works. Let's say this user onboarding and uh, assign role, that is a little bit external because here we are creating user in Auth0. Now how we are creating it, that should be a totally separate topic. You need to find out, you need to provide some way where user can um, log into Auth0 or you can also use this external authentication provider like login with the Google Facebook so you don't need to just do the sign up but sometimes user wants to use this email and the password right for those kind of users you need to first create them here so let's say I have created one user here these are the user and these are the roles. How can I create a roles in the Auth0? You can just create a new roles also. Go to the roles. You can create admin user guest and you can assign the role also to a particular user. So let's say this is the user. Here this is the meta information. User metadata and app metadata and here in the role I can assign you the role also like creator. I can delete this and I can assign you the new role admin. So this role based assignment is something this particular part we need to manage somehow. Okay. First of all, user onboarding and assigning a role to the user. Like here I have assigned a role creator. Now, once the role is assigned, I just need to figure out a way to receive this role information in my Nest.js APIs after I decode the token. So for that, we can use a hooks and rules in Auth0 that is just to enrich the token. Okay. Okay. This is deciding what all information your token will contain when you decode it. So here we can set, okay, I want to set an email, app metadata, I can set the roles, whatever the information you wanted to store or put that inside a token so that the receiver can decode it. All those information you can set here using the rules. This rule is uh, enrich token. That means whatever the token has, I wanted to enrich it with the roles. So line 16 and line 17 here I'm setting the app metadata. App metadata data can contain some permission attributes. And this line 16 contains the role. This is the role like a admin, user, creator, um, authorizer. I mean any kind of roles which are configured in your application. So those roles I'm configuring. Uh, I have assigned a creator role to this user. 
So once user logs in and I decode the token in the Nest.js side, we should be able to receive these roles and app metadata. There can be another additional attributes which we wanted to have and which we wanted to play with in the user session. I mean, role is not enough. Sometimes the additional metadata is also required to authorize at a granular permissions for that we can use app metadata. So here we will do the sign in with Auth0 again and here I'm going to use username password. So I have my account already created and role is also assigned to this user. So this is my next JS application and I got the token. So I will just get the token from the session and I will try to decode this token through the jwt.io that gives the, okay what you have in your token. So here I will try to check what information I have and I, I got it. So I have the role information here in this attribute and the app metadata. These two informations are really very important because using these additional attributes which are set for this user, I can do lots of things at the API level like authorization and maybe a permission controls at sub level because once you provide the permissions at uh, API levels, I can also check the, the low level permissions. Okay, this user is allowed being administrator to do this or not right the policy levels now we are using the same token to authorize and here this is what i'm getting in the code you can see this is the role information this is the app metadata this is what i want in the whatever the role i have assigned at uh, auth0 i should be able to get that role and once i receive the role i should be able to play with that role in the apis because that is what i want to do now we got the role information so this is what the information i'm returning so I'm returning only role, email and auth0 ID and the same information I'm setting at the uh, in the request dot uh, user. So this is my session, the role, email and auth0 ID. And now once this role information is populated, I can create auth guard to protect the routes and allow and disallow a particular routes. Now we just need to configure the role guard like OK, use uh, guards, role guard, role guard will have activation guard and the role allowed these are the two decorators because we also need to tell the role guard that these are the roles for which i want to allow this api so role guard and you uh, role guard and this role allowed these are the two decorators first of all role allowed this role guard implements can activate and if you see here we just going to have a can activate method and inside this method we are just going to access okay what all roles you want to allow this user and this particular user has that particular role or not. So there is a role allowed attribute, role allowed decorator, that's a custom decorator that is just setting, okay, what all roles can access this particular route. So in this role guard, we need to get that, okay, what we have configured, what all roles can access it and what this user actually has the roles. So we have two arrays, one may be a string and we just need to check, okay, the user role contains that role information or not which is set as allowed so here we just need to create a role enum i guess export enum role we are just talking about just admin and user and then get this is this is line number 14 will give you the current roles roles which are set uh, in the decorator otherwise it's empty and now we will also get the roles information which are set in the session if this role length is zero that means there is no roles are set and everybody can access it there is no role allowed array is set here uh, it's an empty string or it's not even configured that means there is no we don't need to apply the role logic here you, everybody can access it this is the role allowed what we are doing in the role allowed is this is just a decorator which is setting the metadata roles in the application if you see this now this role allowed is just doing is whatever the roles you are passing it is using set metadata method and it is setting that role uh, value inside roles metadata and this metadata using reflector api we can access and we can get okay what all roles has been configured for this user for this api route so that the user can access so here inside a role controller we'll just import we have a role guard, we will fix the import path. So that is inside core decorators. This is the role allowed decorator and this is just an enum and then we have a role guard. 
so inside the role guard we are we have created this role guard and here inside the role guard we also need to write more logic now we will get the what role is assigned to the user so first of all for that we need to access the request object because role information for the user is inside a request.user session so here we got the request.user a uh, user role i mean we got the session user and we are just checking if that user has the role which has been set in the allowed or not so just like a basic uh, array check we are doing here if that user has that particular role or not and here we are setting the role so here we are setting the user role uh, user role session information and here we are just checking off if this user having these many roles is allowed to access this api or not okay so this is what we are returning this is just a boolean it is returning boolean can activate now let's check this what i am doing is role allowed so here i just added a super admin uh, which is not the role which this user has right maybe super admin or uh, administrator these are the roles only this can access this particular api and now i will try to see by hitting this api with the user who has a admin role only can access this or not here i am adding a role guard on the all the apis role guard use guard role guard use guard so all the apis are now protected with the guards and now here i can just set the authorization and you can see forbidden resource forbidden resource on the create api because uh, only a super admin can access that api you can see super admin is allowed to access this api and the current role which user has in session is the admin only so we are debugging here okay these are the roles are allowed and auth id these are the session object so this has role is returning false because user is not satisfying the condition user dot roles and now i will just this is the forbidden now i will change the controller and i will just change this to admin just to play with this now because user role is admin and role allowed is also admin that means now user should be able to access all the apis because user role is admin and role allowed is also admin and i can create the restaurant i can list the restaurant all the apis are working so here you can see the user role is admin and the role allowed is also admin so i can access it okay so this is the overall demo of how role based authorization works with auth0 and this is divided into three parts uh, this is like a three part series which is part of the nestjs advanced course so i will also attach the github link and all the reference links so please take a look and uh, get familiar with the authorization and authentication both with auth0 and nestjs